Hello, and welcome back to The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment with Gilda and Barbara. We are doing a book study. I'm going to rephrase that. We've completed the book study on the book, The Power of Now, written by Eckhart Tolle. And we hope that you have had your copy so that you could follow along while we were doing that book study. And Gilda and I have been talking about what's our next step now that we've gotten through all the chapters in the book and all the sections and they're out there on the internet for everyone to enjoy. What is the next thing that we should do? So we've been thinking about it a lot. And today what we came up with was perhaps looking at the introduction, since we didn't do that in the beginning. So my name is Barbara Wainwright, and I'm here with Gilda Simone. Welcome, Gilda. Thank you. Yes. Uh, We were discussing the fact that we started with Chapter 1, Section 1, without going into any introduction of who is Eckhart Tolle? Why did he write the book? (laughs) What's his background? And that type of thing we never did. And it might be interesting for you all to know a little bit more about Gilda, since we did a very, very brief introduction when Gilda took the place of Linda, who originally started this with me. I was grateful to have Gilda step up to the plate and become willing to speak with me. So is there anything that you'd like to share, Gilda? I mean, a little bit about yourself, a little bit of your background and what what's started you on the path with the power of now you must have been in a place in your life where you were searching for answers too oh yeah uh, definitely I had deaf parents and that was very challenging I know that I grew up in a unhealthy environment and that was very very challenging and I know that I'm one of those people that could pretty much say like anybody else out there like you know you don't know what I've been through <laughs> but like I've definitely been through a lot in life and I'm glad that I've come across this book because I was really going on a downward spiral, if you will. Yeah. You know, always, always concerned about like getting validation from other people, you know, outside sources and Mm -hmm. never really knowing how to look inside. Yeah. I'm glad I did. (laughs) Right. So it sounds like you had a lot of challenges but not only a lot of challenges, it sounds like you had family challenges. And then there was kind of a physical handicap in that both your parents were deaf. So your parents had the physical handicap in reality, but that had to have had an impact on you as well. And I think for the most part, just because it's like a whole different culture, a whole different world. You know, you end up kind of being your parents' parents. I was kind of the one that was calling the phone companies and trying to figure out, or my sister was the one trying to figure out what was going on at the doctors. And we were like their voice. Oh yeah. And maybe like at too much of a young age where like, maybe there were things that we shouldn't have known. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. You were the way that they were able to communicate and function in the hearing world. They would have been the majority of the world. (laughs) Yeah, the majority. Exactly. (laughs) I I don't know what percentage of people suffer from not being able to hear, but I would imagine it's not a large proportion. Right. So that was a challenge. You had to be almost an adult as soon as you could learn to communicate or got old enough to communicate with language and speaking, then you had to be the adult in the family that handled everything that they could not because they couldn't speak out loud because they couldn't hear. Exactly. Wow. And then from there, what happened after that? You know, I think more of my challenges came because they were like abusive and I actually recently forgave them. (laughs) So it's like, like, I'm not ready to break bread with them just yet, but I'm at the point where communicated with them and I have forgiven them. Yeah. I mean, it's not their fault. (laughs) Yeah, definitely not. Like Eckhart says. Definitely not their fault. But at the same time, just because you've forgiven them doesn't mean that you're going to break bread with them. Yeah. I like that expression, forgive them for they know not what they do. 
at the same yeah. time, yes, I can forgive people. I mean, holding on to resentment only hurts you. It doesn't hurt them. At the same time, I don't know that there's any reason to put yourself back in a situation that you will absolutely get zero benefit from. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I know at first I felt like it was a big spiritual growth just to cut them out of my life. There was a good solid few years where I would not speak to them. I felt like, oh, yeah, this is a big achievement. I'm strong enough to cut them off. A lot of people just stay. Then after a while, it's like you kind of go through your healing process. You realize what say did they really have in their own life? They're trying to raise these two kids and they're not really sure like what they're doing. And they don't really have that many people to look up to. Yeah. Oh, there's another spiritual growth because now you learn to forgive without any ego kind of meddling and get in the way. And so maybe the next growth will be me being able to break bread with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I learned a lot from the people that were not very nice to me. <laughs> yeah. <same. laughs> right. You learn a lot about who you are, how strong you are. It's a super growth experience being around toxic people and then knowing and accepting responsibility for attracting them into your life. I think that's kind of huge. Yeah. Well, I think in my situation, it became a case of, losing that fear and actually being able to tell them how I feel and how their actions affected my life. And I think it also comes down to boundaries. Maybe it was just kind of a burden on me to keep holding it in. So I just remember telling them how I felt and them saying that they understood and that they were sorry, which a lot of people, it's hard for them to say. Right. That's but, a gift because a yeah. lot of people will still be in denial and say it was your problem, your fault. It's not to anything to do with, I didn't do anything wrong. Right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, um, but also keep in mind that they're who they are. So they're always going to, they can say sorry, but they're still going to act in those ways. Yeah. So I just, I learned when I did reach out to them, like, okay, I, I kind of expected that was going to happen and it did. And I put my foot down. I was like, hey, if you want to still speak to me, you have to respect my boundaries. And what you just said there was not was not working out. So I'm going to hang up now. I think that's huge that you were able to express a boundary, first of all. And then secondly, that you were able to enforce the boundary. So yeah. kudos, you know, that's part of, I believe, part of discovering who we are and what we will accept. I heard right. we teach others how to treat us by sh showing them what we'll tolerate. I agree. You just st stood up for yourself and let them know, hey, no, this is a boundary and I'm, this is not acceptable to me. Therefore, our conversation is over. And if you want to speak to me again, you need to respect my boundaries. That's really powerful work that you did there my hat's off to you kudos it's it that takes a lot of inner strength thank you yeah it's hard because it's like you feel bad because you're just like oh you know that they don't mean to be that way that's just how they are but at the same time it's like well I love myself too and I know that I don't deserve that yeah and at some level they're your parents and so exactly. I'm sure there's a deep love there I had a deep deep love for my mother but it was very difficult for me to love her. I, mean, I, I think I had a love, an unconditional love for her. At the same time, some of the things that she did to me were mean, spiteful, and unacceptable. And I didn't want to be around that. So right. even though I still love her for bringing me into the world, if you will. And I think in Eckert's introduction, he says that too, he, in his acknowledgement section, she said, finally, I would like to express my love and gratitude to my mother and father, without whom this book would not have come into existence. I acknowledge that without my mother and my father, I wouldn't be here. And I'm oh, forever grateful that they brought me into the world. At the same time, that doesn't mean that my mother's behavior was acceptable. Right. It doesn't mean that I want to be around that or in her presence. I do not miss her presence. I miss my father, who I guess I had a stronger connection to and relationship with. In my opinion, my father was an angel on earth. He was amazing and so friendly. It's the little things. He knew everybody's name 
of all the people that worked at the grocery store. Everybody at the liquor store knew him. Everybody at the grocery store knew him. Everybody at the restaurants, the local little restaurants, they knew him and he knew them and he knew their names. And you'd walk into the local little restaurant and they go, you know, hello. And and my father's Fred Burdett. They go, oh, we know. (laughs) He was an amazing human being, friendly, compassionate, thoughtful, caring, and he was fun to be around. He wasn't judgmental. I think that was one of the things with my mother. She was very judgmental. And, yes. <laughs> you know, he yeah, had looking down her nose at people and it just, you know, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Like you were saying earlier in our conversation right now, we don't know what somebody else has been through. We don't know what their challenges are. And how could you look down on someone when we're all human beings? We're all here on planet Earth trying to figure out life. Some of us might figure it out faster than others. Some of us might have had more gifts when we were born than others. But we're all here doing the same thing, trying to figure out life. You know, spiritual beings having a human experience, trying to figure it out. Thank you for sharing about that and kind of explains a little bit of how you got into this book, The Power of Now. Yeah, just a lot of challenges in life. Well, because growing up, I couldn't really ever find validation. Anytime I wanted to be who I was, there was always someone telling me like, who do you think you are? Like, why are you doing your hair like that? Why would you wear makeup? You know, Mm -hmm. like that doesn't look right. Someone always trying to dictate the things that I like to do. So then I think that caused me to look outward and try to seek validation from other people. And, you know, It's really hard to do that because not everyone has your best interest in mind. Even if you think they do, you know, you could have a friend that you think is your best friend ever. And it turns out they're kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing, if you will. Or, you know, like maybe there was some kind of jealousy there or there's something where, you know, like you think you're sharing something with your friend, but then it turns out they don't have your best interest at heart because maybe they can't do that. Or, you know, they have to do things different to get attention. And it kind of, no, it kind of reminds me of that Green Day song you know, that 90s band. (laughs) It's called She, and he has a line in there that says she's figured out all her doubts are someone else's point of view. And it's just like, yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Wow. All my doubts are someone else's point of view. Didn't know that lyric or the saying. It's very interesting. Yeah, well, I guess that's just what that reminds me of, you know, I would seek validation from other people, and it never really led me in the right direction it wasn't until I found the book and started really looking inside that I was wow you know there's things that I'm good at that like I can validate for myself and while doing that you kind of start to see it push out to other people like the right people kind of start coming in your life because you're believing in yourself and you know what you're capable of you know as opposed to maybe relying on other people to be like yeah that is good or yeah that is cool or yeah you are good at that like when you know that when you know that for yourself it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> right. And I think that comes with the saying, and I don't know where I heard it from, but we know ourselves best through others. And so instead of asking somebody, hey, what do you think? It's like, ask yourself, what do I think? What is my feeling about this? When you get into a job, for instance, you get out in the world, you get in a job and you start seeing how other people work and work together and mingle together and how they manage themselves you start to realize, oh, I, I'm really good at this because I see them really struggling with that over there. And that for me is easy. So exactly. now, I know, right. So you, you wouldn't have known how good you were at something or how easy it was for you until you saw someone else struggle with it. Yeah, then you can true. kind of appreciate that about yourself. So when I say we know ourselves best through others, it's watching and observing others and coming to know that that's not what I would do, or, oh, I wouldn't say that, or that's not a way that I want to behave in the world. You learn that way. You also learn by watching others and seeing them struggle and and realizing how easy something is for you and how good it feels to know that that's easy for you. you (laughs) If you're living with insecurity and doubt in yourself, you most likely pick that up from somebody else telling you like, no, you're not capable of that. Like you can't do that. How did you discover the book, The Power of Now? It was like a few years ago, one of my friends kind of, you know, we talked about books because I love to read. 
And she was like, have you read The Power of Now? And I was just like, oh, gosh, no, you know, like, not one of those books again. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I don't I don't know. And then uh, I had went to a psychic and she was just like, oh, like, have you heard of The Power of Now? And I was just like, yeah, but like, I haven't read it. And she's like, oh, like, you should read it. And I was like, yeah. And then one night, like, I was kind of going through, I guess I was having a breakdown, if you will. And I just remember crying and praying, like, like, what do I need to do, like, to change this? And then, like, that book, like, popped in my mind. And I was just like, all right, like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I got to read this book. Oh, my gosh. That sounds so and familiar. I, uh, I, I have, I'm, I'm like, a, man. Yeah, okay, Sorry. I get it. I get it. All right, I got it. I'm going to go read the book. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just so glad I did because reading the introduction was like, wow, like, that's exactly, like, how I felt. And then that just opened a whole new world for me after that. Oh, that's outstanding. I love hearing that because that just brings us right to the introduction of this book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this first sentence, I think it's great where he says, I have little use for the past. I mean, that's what we've been talking about right now. I have little use for the past. What would be the use of reviewing the past? There isn't any use to it. It's done. It's over. It's history. <laughs> you know, right? We've been there. We've done that. Yeah, we can learn from it. I think that's a, a really good thing. But to hold on to anything from the past doesn't serve us. So, yeah, because you'll just keep reliving it. Yeah, and there's no point in reliving it. I mean, to share with somebody like you did today, thank you very much for that, Gilda. I think to share with somebody your past so that they can maybe get something or hear something that helps them to get through a situation that they might currently be going through, that's a gift. But to do it for any other reason, there's no point, right? Yeah. So I have little use for the past and rarely think about it. However, I would briefly like to tell you how I came to be a spiritual teacher and how this book came into existence. And today, what I think we've done is we've shared how Gilda came to be and I'm going to say it, a spiritual teacher in that here we are, we're teaching people about the power of now and the gifts that we find in it. And we're putting our take on what we're hearing out there. And we've shared how you, well, we didn't, you know what we didn't share, how you and I came together to do this, but maybe we'll do that too. So maybe this is an introduction to Gilda and a little bit of an introduction to me is how I came to do this was I too had a very difficult past. I won't go into my details right now because I think we've done enough of that today, but I also had a very difficult past in that I was you know, married twice, divorced twice. I had two children with each one of those marriages and there was a lot of difficulties in them because of those difficulties. I went through a lot. I did a lot of seeking and looking and a lot of personal growth. I happened to hear about the power of now book from a professor at long beach state university. And he shared about the power of now I picked up the book and never put it down. <laughs> so, I ended up buying cassette tapes of the book and I listened to, okay, so this is a long time ago. I think, I think it was 1995 when I found out about the book and I bought cassette tapes and I listened to the cassette tapes for five years in my car over and over again, just because I would hear new things every time I listened to, oh, that's new, that's new. And then I started to get the idea of how to go inside and how to transmute and transform the energies that were in my field. I learned how not to resist. My, my daughter was great at teaching me the things that I would find that I would resist in my body. she act out or say something and it would hit my stomach at like a wall and I'm like, oh, there's a resistance. And then I'd be able to take and focus all my attention and transmute that feeling and let it go. And eventually you get lighter and lighter and lighter. And there is nothing that hits you like a brick wall anymore. It all just trans it goes right through and you aren't taking offense or offended or per taking nothing personally anymore eventually. And you're living a life that is just beautiful and enlightened and that's where we hope that you all get to through listening to our take on the power of now a guide to spiritual enlightenment this book by Eckhart Tolle 
So I think that's a good way to wrap up this session. What are your thoughts, Gilda? Yeah, I think you're right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, it's with a lot of love and compassion. And I want to say thank you to Gilda for sharing her story, because I know that that can be scary sometimes to share what's happened in your life and what's brought you to this point. But, you know, without all those experiences, we wouldn't be here doing what we're doing today. I agree with that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye.